Without a doubt, one of the most popular characters in all of Assassin's Creed is Hytham Kenway, and deservedly too. He's got an incredibly interesting story, with the only issue being that it's very fragmented. So today, I've put together a timeline of Hytham Kenway's life from birth to death. So anyway, let's get into this. Hytham Kenway was born on the 4th of December 1725, and lived in Queen Anne Square in London with his parents Tessa Kenway and Master Assassin Edward Kenway, as well as his half-sister Jennifer Scott, who was born to Edward's first wife Caroline. From a very young age, Hytham was taught to be an assassin, although subtly, learning to use a sword at just six, and was often lonely as he wasn't allowed to speak to other kids. On his eighth birthday, Hytham was introduced to Reginald Birch, a property manager for his father. Later that night, some men tried to mug his mother, but were cut down by Birch, much to Edward's dismay. When Edward asked Hytham what he would have done, he said he would have initially been angry, but would have wanted to let the two go if he could have. Edward kept training Hytham, telling him to think for himself, and Birch showed a lot of interest in Hytham's training, taking a fondness to him, although Birch didn't feel the same towards his father, as not long after, Hytham overheard an argument between the two, an argument which Birch left, telling Hytham before he exited that he tried to warn his father. Not long after that, a group of mercenaries attacked the Kenway mansion, which is when Haytham took his first kill, a man trying to kill his mother, but despite his efforts, Edward was cut down in the fight. Birch turned up just in time to save the last two remaining mercenaries from killing Haytham, and two of the others had left with Jennifer and set fight to the house by that point. Afterwards, Birch told Haytham that he was going to search for Jennifer in Europe, and told him he knew she was there after being told by Templars. Haytham was taken with the concept of working with a knight, not knowing that Birch had orchestrated the attack and had his sister sold to Turkish slavers, and his mother was more than happy to let him go, seeing her son as nothing more than a killer now, meaning he could leave London for greater Europe with Birch. Before he left, the chambermaid, Emily, told Haytham about how her sister Violet, a servant at his neighbour's house, had heard Jennifer scream about some traitor while being dragged away. Emily told Haytham Birch might have been the traitor, but he didn't believe it, instead remembering that Jack Digweed, Edward's valet, was absent that night, and he suspected him more than anything. Haytham was soon introduced to Edward Braddock, another Templar, and for the next five years, Haytham was slowly indoctrinated into the Order. Birch and Haytham lived in a chateau near Trey in France, and Haytham would find comfort in the Templar Order, as he liked that it questioned the world, as his father did, although Haytham was sceptical about the first civilization, despite Birch's enthusiasm. In 1744, when Haytham was 19, he was formally inducted into the Order, where he fulfilled his first assassination on a merchant in Liverpool, and later one on an Austrian prince, quickly building himself a reputation of an effective killer and a valuable asset to the Templar Order. Three years later, Haytham assassinated a Templar traitor named Juan Vedemir, stealing a journal from him filled with research on the first civilization. Not too long after that, his mother Tessa died. When he returned to London, he went through his childhood diary, figuring out that Betty, a nursemaid at the house, was in a relationship with Jack Digweed. After this, he tracked down Betty and asked her of Jack's whereabouts, finding out that he was in southwest Germany. They later found him in the country after a few weeks of tracking him, and noticed him being tortured by a man with pointed ears, much like the man who kidnapped Jennifer. After chasing him down and stabbing him in the kidney, he revealed that Edward was an assassin and died for something that he possessed. Later on, Braddock requested Haytham's aid fighting the French. In one case, a man asked if he and his family could come aboard their ship, and Haytham said yes, although Braddock refused, and after the man insulted Braddock, he had his executioner Slater murder the family, even the children. Haytham grew to resent Braddock and his violent and remorseless behaviour, and would leave the army soon after. In 1753, Haytham was ordered to kidnap the young rebel Lucio Albertine, as her mother could decode the journal of first civ knowledge, although she was being protected by Miko, whom he fought, disarming Haytham of his beloved sword, and the fight ended with Miko falling off a small edge and escaping, although Haytham managed to get Miko's blade, which in the meantime he could use to replace his sword, although not too long after, Haytham and Miko would meet again, this time at the Theatre Royale, which he'd visited with his father around 20 years before, but this time he was sent to take a precursor artefact, the precursor key from Miko, which he did after assassinating him. Haytham met back up with the Order who sent him to America, as they knew that the precursor artefacts were of some significance there, and so Haytham was sent on a 72 day journey to Boston, where on the way, Louis Mills, an assassin operative, tried to kill Haytham by disguising himself as a sailor, but to no avail. Haytham arrived there where he met Charles Lee, his assistant, who was an opportunistic civicant to put it lightly, 
Bertrand given Haytham a list of some names of various Templar associates in the city, gathering Thomas Hickey, William Johnson, John Pitcairn and Benjamin Church to the cause. After they had done some recruiting, Haytham decided to free some native slaves at the Southgate Fort, believing they may have some information on the first civilization. This is where he met Zio, who Haytham tracked down a few months later, believing she could help him, which he did in return for killing Braddock, who had been trying to drive out her tribe for months by that point. Haytham tried to open the Grand Temple, although didn't have the right piece of Eden to do so, although he did stay as him and Zio had a brief relationship for a while, or a few weeks. This ended when Lee told them that Braddock Braddock had died of his wounds, this point telling Zio he knew that he was dead, which frustrated her. Lee also had news that Jennifer had been found, and the two parted ways. Haytham found Jennifer was now a concubine in Constantinople. They both escaped, but not without trouble, as an ally of Haytham's, Holden, had been mutilated. Jennifer later told Haytham that Birch had orchestrated the attack, and so the two, as well as Holden, travelled to Birch's chateau to confront him, where Jennifer killed Birch, however Lucio, whom Haytham had to capture a few years before, was there and stabbed him in the chest, and he had to be kept in bed for six months. After he recovered, Haytham went back to the colonies, and Jennifer back to London. In 1758, Haytham oversaw the induction of their new recruit, Shea Patrick Cormac, who informed Haytham of the precursor sites and the earthquakes that came with them, disasters that would continue to happen if Achilles and his brotherhood was allowed to continue interfering, and so Haytham asked Shea to purge the colonial brotherhood, which he did, even accompanying Shea when he assassinated Adewale, a close friend of his father who shamed Haytham for his life decisions. After the deaths of Adewale, Hope Jensen, Kasega Wase, Lachasseur, Louis-Joseph Gaultier, Chevalier de la Vendrie, that's one person by the way, the only two who remained were Achilles Davenport and Liam O'Brien, who Haytham and Shay tracked down when they were hunting another artifact, one which they triggered, causing an earthquake. In the calamity, Shay assassinated Liam, and Haytham disarmed Achilles. However, Shay told him not to kill the man, as he was useless without his brotherhood, and could even tell others of the danger of the artifacts. Haytham hated these words, but not before shooting Achilles in the shin. For the next few years, Haytham went about killing anyone who allied with the colonials, leaving none left but Achilles and Robert Faulkner. In 1774, Haytham met with the Templars who had helped him find the Grand Temple to discuss using the American Revolution to their advantage, where Charles Lee told Haytham Zio had died 14 years earlier as a result of an attack ordered by George Washington. Lee told Haytham that they were there and had threatened a boy from their village, presumably the same one who met Church at Martha's Vineyard asking for Charles Lee's whereabouts. William Johnson corroborated these accounts, saying he'd seen him in assassin robes at the Boston Tea Party. That same assassin would soon kill both Johnson and Pitcairn. After Lee was turned down for Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army, Haytham arranged for Thomas Hickey to murder Washington, and after that same assassin prevented it, he was sent to be hanged as the Templars had framed him, although by now Haytham had pieced together that this was his son, Connor Kenway, and at the last minute he threw a throwing knife at the rope, saving his life. The two would actually meet in 1778, as they both had the same goal at that point, killing Benjamin Church, who had deserted the Templar Order. On their mission, Haytham tried teaching Connor why he believed the things he did, and vice versa, with neither Kenway moving, and after killing Church, Haytham revealed to Connor that Washington planned to attack his village. And as Connor was now aware that Haytham had withheld information, he left Haytham and wouldn't see him again until his death, three years later, when Connor attacked Fort George, looking for Lee, only to meet Haytham in his place. The two fought, and Haytham had the upper hand for a while, strangling Connor and telling him why the Templars would always win, although to his surprise, Connor stabbed Haytham in the neck with his hidden blade, but despite that and his son's deviation from his path, Haytham told Connor he was proud of his son's qualities, yet he was unmoved and died just how he lived, defending the Templars to the bitter end. So anyway guys, I hope that wasn't too boring, there's not video or art for a lot of this, because it's from like books and the databases, but I'll do my best with what I can with like what there is, but I hope that was interesting enough, I thought it was just nice to have all of Haytham's life condensed into one thing, because it's a bit all over the place, but if you enjoyed that, maybe suggest me law, because I love doing this stuff, whether it be trivial or something more big, and also... Thank you for 1,500 subscribers, we're at like 1,800 now, because by the time this comes out I won't have uploaded for 2 or 3 days, I am sorry about that, but it's been mental the last few days, it's been like one of the days I got 150 subs, which is just insane for me, 
But yeah, thank you guys. We're almost at 2,000 already. And I hit 1,000 like less than two weeks ago. So thank you for that so much. Anyway, be sure to suggest some lore you want to see me do if you have anything in mind. If you enjoyed, maybe leave a like. And if you didn't, maybe let me know why. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.